Data controller is really useful if you need Playout 1 to talk to external equipment. So for example, you have an Axia console, a Wheatstone console, maybe a broadcast tool switcher, maybe an SAS console or something else, something on the outside of the Playout 1 infrastructure and you either need to receive commands from it or you need Playout 1 to talk to it. This is where Data Controller comes in. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up new integrations within Data Controller. So to begin with, we're gonna go and open up Data Controller and we're going to go into the settings where we're going to add our first integration, which is going to be an Axia node. So we're gonna to go to settings and we're gonna to go to the integrations tab and we're going to click add to add our integration. And then we can start to do lots of different things. The first thing we'll do is pick from the drop down box the service. It's going to be Axia. We fill in all the details to the right and we're going to give it a description. So this is going to be our node. So we'll call it node one. And once we're done, we'll hit save and that's it. We can start to receive and set GPI and GPOs on the Axia node. Very simple. Let's go do another one. Let's hit add. And this time we're going to choose Wheatstone from the drop down. Fill in your Wheatstone settings on the right. Give it a description. Blade 2. Hit save. And it's done. We can now set LIOs, SLIOs, control utility mixers, all from Wheatstone. Now the next integration on the list is TCP server. One of these gets created the first time you start up data controller. So you don't need to add another. But what the TCP server does is allow anything external to connect to data controller on a port so that things can be triggered with inside Playout 1 itself. Audio Science GPIO, if you've got an Audio Science card with GPIO functionality, it's dead simple. You just pick it, give it a name, and you're done. Now, this is a good one. This is where probably most of our customers use Data Controller to its uh, fullest, and that is when we need to communicate with a serial device, such as a broadcast tool switcher. So let's go and set one of those up. Now, the first thing you need to do is pick your serial port from the drop down box, COM1 for us. We're then going to choose our serial device. So if it's a broadcast tools device, you can select the one from the list. If it's something else, just select other. You can then select the device ID. Normally, this is going to be zero or one. You can configure your board rate. There's some optional settings on the bottom here we're not going to touch. We're just going to give it a nice, easy description. Main sat, hit save, and we're done. That simple. Let's go add some more, shall we? Uh, next, we're going to choose an SAS console. Set the IP, set the port, give it a description, hit save. You are done. It's that simple. It really is. Lovely Rubicon connected here in Studio 2. Hit save. We're done. Next, what are we going to add? From the drop-down box under service, we're going to go to an Advantech card. If you've got an Advantech card, select the card. It should show up there in the uh, drop-down if it exists. Give it a description and you're done. TCP client, if you need Playout 1 to connect to a TCP client, you can set that up in here as well. Similarly, similarly, I can't say that word. Similarly, you've got a UDP client as well. So if you need to talk to a UDP device, then you can set up a UDP client as well to allow Playout 1 to send out via UDP. So there you are. That's how easy it is to add an integration into Data Controller. If you have any questions on any of the devices that we've talked about here in today's video, then simply email us support at air.com.